No, we just we are here waiting and asking from our Sheikh to send us with something that is going to benefit us. We're not here to just waste our time. We're not here as a routine. We're not here coming here prepared with any agenda. We're here to learn, both you and me. Now you have a question about family. How you are saying, Allah is saying, your heart only belongs to me. But you're asking me, now what about the family? And specifically, what about the family? That their hearts are not with Allah. What do we do? And we spoke a little bit. And I said, this is a very controversial topic. But it's okay, people are not accepting us anyway. We can be as controversial as we want. It's when you accept it by the society, especially if the authorities put a stamp on you, that's the time you cannot speak the truth, correct? We may speak. Who listens? Doesn't matter. It's not up to us. Our duty is for us to speak. Because the new idol, that is the most important thing, they say. New idol for believers and unbelievers, Muslims and non-Muslims. They say the most important thing, don't yawn, go and renew your wudu. Ah, shaitan is tricking people. Just about we're going to start something on a very important topic in the sohbat, right in front, not even knowing how to cover your mouth. This is example for all of us to understand. You have to be alert, you have to be awake. That means that if you are just sitting in front and you're just letting your body to do whatever it wants to do, you're just yawning, stretching, uh, sleeping. In the sohbat where we just said we are waiting for Sheriff Fendi to send us something, this is not something that we're preparing. If we cannot catch our ego just for that few minutes to listen, that is showing that we're letting our ego to go wild when you're not in sohbat. And number two, that sohbat is not going to give you too much benefit. So what are we saying? Do you remember? Or are you sleeping? You're sleeping. Do you remember? No, you're gone. So the new idol. They say the most important thing in this world is family. You know, family. You see? Family. Family. What happened to Allah? What happened to his Prophet? What happened to Haq? What happened to Islam? No, family is the most important. A family, you are just related by blood. Correct? And if you extend this worship for the family, then you're going to say, by blood, that means the most important thing is by tribe. Most important thing is by color. Most important thing is by nationalism. Then what happened to Ummat? What happened to the whole Muslim nation? So we're back to first Jahiliya, first age of ignorance in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Most important thing is what? Is a tribe. Tribes consist of the family, correct? We say that is the most sacred thing. You can do anything you want, but you cannot break that. If you break that, you're out of the tribe. No one is going to help you. You're not going to have any protector, no nothing. And the Prophet ﷺ came to destroy that tribalism. Because he is saying with Allah's words, ﷺ, he is saying, only the believers, they are brothers. Family is by blood. Quickly other people are going to say, no, 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 no. That's talking about if the family is not, you know, Muslim. But if the whole family is Muslim, then the family is the most important thing. It is not. If the family is the most important thing, 
A family is the most important thing. Family is so important, so holy. And I'm answering this question through the eyes of tariqat and tasawuf. I'm not answering this question through psychology or through history or through sociology. No, this is through tasawuf. If family is so holy, some people are saying holy family. If family is so holy, why we are witnessing, or why have we witnessed that it is first the family of the Holy Prophet والسلام, that is being sacrificed in this way, the Ahlul Bayt. If family is so important and so holy, Prophet is going to be the first one to protect his family from every harm, from every inconvenience, from every hurt. But we're saying, and we're going to enter into the days of Ashura. The Ahlul Bayt are the first ones to come forward. The people of the house first one to come forward to sacrifice. Maybe they know something we don't know. Maybe the meaning of Ahlul Bayt is understanding that this whole world is one family. Maybe the meaning of Ahlul Bayt is to have that love, same one that the Prophet ﷺ had, not for his family, but for the whole Ummat, Muslims and non-Muslims. So the Prophet ﷺ repeatedly saying, Ummati, Ummati, from the time that he was born, to the time that he passed, to the time that he's going to be raised, to the time that he's going to be in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking for intercession for his Ummat. We are following him. We should at least have that. We should at least understand that. Now you're not going to put your family there. You're going to say, so easy, everyone is saying, oh yeah, Aki, Aki, brother, sister. There's only words. That's why we don't really use it here. Do you know why? Because if you say brother, you say sister. I mean, I don't want the brothers to address the sisters. They're not doing that. Sisters not addressing the brothers. But these days, I don't know. Outside, you see very weird things. You see man and woman, they're married to each other, and they calling the husband called the wife sister, and the wife calling the husband brother. Very unusual. So we live in very unusual times. They're not addressing to each other, but when you address to each other, the man to each other, your brother, you've already now signed a contract. This is my brother. My life is for him. Are we at that level? No. We're not. Are we at the level whose example is in front of us? The Ansar and the Muhajir. The Ansar, the people of Medina. And the Muhajir, the people who made the Hijrah from Mecca coming to Medina. Those were brothers and they were sharing. They are sharing everything. Everything they were sharing, you understand? Their house, their wealth, their possessions, their families, they were sharing. Some of them are even saying, okay, you take her. You understand? They were helping. So now, we split open the meaning of family. It is not by blood. Blood and flesh and bones going to finish. This is not our identity. Our identity is our spirit. When we're going to wake up to understand this? And that spirit is not recognizing black or white or green or yellow. The spirit does not recognize the outward form. The spirit recognized, ah, uh, not only you are my family, but we were together. I feel very familiar with you. I don't feel this kind of familiarity with my own blood family. Because once upon a time, 
maybe for thousands of years we were sitting with each other on the day of promises in the time before time. This is what the prophets are being sent. Because the prophets with their nation is like a father to all their children. And the children must be able to recognize each other. Uh, do we have rights over our families? Yes. Do our families have rights over us? Of course they do. You must always respect. You must always love. You must always help. What if uh, they start attacking you on this way of haq? Don't fight. Be patient. Who knows? Allah is going to turn their hearts one day. What if they attack and they throw me out of the house? Well, in the first place, if you're an adult, you shouldn't be living with your parents anyway. If you're an adult, you should be contributing to help your parents. What if they attack me <laughs> and they cursing me nonstop? No, you're not living with them. You're living somewhere else. Try to make peace with them. If they don't want to make any peace, they continue to do that. Draw a line to say, if you don't pass these borders, we are okay. If you pass these borders, it's not going to be okay because I'm not attacking you. You're the one who's attacking me. Maybe they're not going to listen. Doesn't matter. Allah is listening. What happens if it's your own children, your own wives, or your own husbands that is not following the way of Haq? Welcome to the Ahir Zaman. This is exactly what happened in the first Jahiliyyah. Families are split, tribes were split. And this is one of the things that the mushriks of the first Jahiliyyah, they were so upset with the Holy Prophet. They say because he is not playing by the rules of our culture. What is that? Family is first. Tribe is first. Whatever you do, you don't split, you don't betray your tribe, correct? And he came and he split everything. Father was fighting against son. Son was fighting against father. Not with words. They were pulling their swords. Don't get too excited. We're not saying you should pull the sword to your father or father to the son. I'm saying that because people like to twist our words. It's okay. You can twist as much as you want. Because on the judgment day, there is an ayat for that too. For those ones that they get twisted around their necks. You understand? And some by their own tongue, they're going to twist them. But that is the reality. That is what happened. Why are they doing that? Are they doing that because they like to marry this girl their father doesn't like? Are they doing that because the boy says, I want to start this business and the father doesn't like? Is it anything to do with dunya? No, it has everything to do with the Holy Prophet ﷺ. Because they put him first. You don't like that? Then you're not in Islam. You don't like that? Be careful. Because the perfection of faith, Holy Prophet is saying, if you don't love me more than you love anyone else or everything else, your faith is not complete. They don't like to mention this part. And loving the Prophet is not just to get emotional about Prophet. It's not just to cry every time you hear him and to long to be with him. That is still very low level. Just like a child wanting to be with a father. Crying, wanting to be with a father. Correct? Father is here, the child is over there. I love you, I want to be with you. Cry, crying, crying. It's still a child. If the child grows up, he sees his father is over there. What is the grown-up child? What is the man going to do? He's going to come up to his father and says, anything you want me to do, I'm here to help you. 
I'm here to help you, I'm here to serve you. Whatever that you devote your life with, I'm going to do. The same thing with this Ummah and the Prophet They want to make Ashkir Rasul just to be like that, emotional and just crying, but not understanding what is making the Prophet to cry. Are you trying to stop the Prophet from crying? He is crying. Look at the state of this Ummah, he's crying. Prophet came one man to stand up for Haq. Are we doing that? No, we're not. Then what is his love? There is some love there. But it's just very low-level, selfish love. And our families, if it is not sacrificed in the way of Haq, what kind of a family is that? We so quickly we say, oh yes, prophets are role models. Sahabis are role models, the awliya are role models, but we say you must sacrifice a little bit. Your thoughts, your ideas, your attitude, your responses, huh? sacrifice a little bit of that in the way of Haq. They say, what is this? This cult or something? What is this? I have to sacrifice something? But look, we're just saying, Ashura is going to enter. Prophet Lisa sacrificed his whole family. The Sahabi Kiram, they sacrificed their whole families. Those who are following in their footsteps will continue to do the same. And that time, it does not mean, listen to this very carefully, it doesn't mean you stop loving your family. It means whatever love that I have to have for my family, now I have to extend it. To who? To my brothers. Who are my brothers? The believers. What I want for my family, I must provide for my brothers too, because they are my real family. Because Allah is saying, only the believers, they are brothers. That time you may find a balance. You understand? Otherwise, it's just every man for himself again. Astaghfirullah alazim wa atubu alayh. As much as we can, this is what we're trying to do. This is what we're doing. We're not trying, we're doing this. With the support of our Shaykh only, we're doing this. We're not perfect, we're not rushing for perfection. We are just rushing to clean ourselves, that's all. To try to do it well, to try to do it good. We are running to have the pleasure of our Lord, to have the pleasure of our Prophet, to have the pleasure of our Shaykh. We are not doing anything else other than that. Do you understand? That time, don't worry, the love that you have for your family, it will grow. And it will be balanced, because you are not worshipping something that doesn't deserve to be worshipped. It's going to be balanced. Otherwise, every little thing is going to break you. Every little thing is going to unravel you. Every little thing is going to give you some panic. You understand? The family must rest on faith. The family is not resting on faith. It's a big problem. Now, we are in a spiritual way. We are in tariqat. You're saying, what if my family doesn't believe in it? I said, I already told you the answer. Don't push, don't fight, don't argue. Leave them. Slowly they'll come to understand. But you continue our way because we want to return to our real family. We want to return to that group of believers that have always been there for us. Since the time before time. Wa min Allahu tafiq al Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.